Hello Hot Wheels fans. Today we're going to learn how to convert a Hot Wheels power booster that runs on batteries onto one that runs without batteries and can simply be plugged into the wall. Uh, this is one example. This is a Hot Wheels uh, power booster, single lane, uh, bought it used. These are uh, often available in garage sales or on eBay. They come in a number of different uh, shapes and colors and sometimes even with more than one uh, uh, power uh, booster. So they typically run on batteries as this one does. It has two D cells in it and uh, by turning on the on switch uh, it runs the wheels and with the track connected on either side like so, uh, the cars are propelled through the rubber wheels and down the track, uh, making for a lot of fun. The problem is the batteries uh, run out and need to be replaced. So what we're gonna show you today is how to convert this to run off AC so you don't need batteries. And we're gonna do that conversion for less than the cost of a pair of batteries. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. Uh, you're going to need a couple of things. Uh, you're going to need, most importantly, an AC to DC converter. Uh, this one was purchased off eBay for uh, less than $2, including shipping. And if you look at the label there, you can see the rating. This one is 120 to 240 AC, so you'll be able to plug that into your standard uh, wall outlet, uh, either in the U.S. or in, uh, overseas. Uh, and the output is 3 volts with a maximum of one amp. Three volts times one amp is three watts. And the actual, uh, this is something you wanna be careful of, the actual current output is gonna depend on the motor, how much the motor is pulling. This particular converter is gonna allow up to one amp, which will be plenty for this uh, little Hot Wheels motor. But do be careful because some of these converters will have a amperage output of uh, less the, uh, than that, perhaps 300 milliamps or 500 milliamps, uh, which is considerably less than one full amp. So uh, let's go ahead and look at what else we need. We're gonna need uh, one of these little uh, adapter pieces. What you see on the end of this is a 5.5 millimeter uh, plug. And so we need a uh, receptacle of the same type. I bought these separately, also off eBay. And these are the kind that are typically used for uh, security cameras, low power draw, uh, but uh, plenty sufficient for this little Hot Wheels motor. So here's the little connector, which you can see I've already uh, put into this particular unit here. And it comes with a little backing nut and two leads. For this particular one, the uh, longer lead that you see here is the uh, negative lead and the positive lead here. It has a little hole on there. We're actually gonna solder these connections, but uh, if you're handy with small pieces of wire, I suppose you could, uh, if you wanted to, actually thread the wire through there and twist it on with, the, with a little electrical tape, uh, make a, a secure electrical connection. But we recommend soldering these connections. And what you'll see here is the, uh, the connections go together just like so. Obviously, you wanna be careful with the 120 volt uh, end of this adapter. You can get a pretty severe shock there, but this end is, is pretty safe. And in fact, even plugged into the wall, uh, you can handle that safely. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and pop the batteries out of this. Uh, and I'm gonna show you uh, how to make this conversion. Uh, this conversion can be done for units that use different types of batteries. Some uh, units take three or four batteries. So if you look at the battery itself, you'll see the voltage rating. This particular battery has a rating of 1.5 volts. And so with two of these together, you have uh, two times 1.5 or three volts, which is exactly the same uh, as this adapter. So when you buy the adapter, make sure you're getting the right type of voltage for uh, the booster that you are modifying. So what we're going to do now is take the uh, screws out of the bottom and I've taken the liberty of pre-loosening uh, or removing some of these screws and the standard screwdriver is going to take those out and let's go ahead and open this up. And what we see inside here of course is uh, not much. We've got a little drive motor in here with a drive gear and then uh, a couple of uh, gears that turn the rubber uh, wheels on the top side. So. Uh, pretty simple and straightforward. So, <clears throat> excuse me. When determining the proper voltage, if you look at the end of this, you can see that the two batteries are simply connected together with this uh, conductive plate here. So you have the batteries in effect in series. 
So 1.5 volts and 1.5 volts uh, with those batteries like that. And the current is gonna flow just through that loop. So what we actually have here in this circuit is the negative end here, where the first battery's negative connects, uh, and then the positive here, where the second battery's positive connection is. We're not gonna do anything on this end down here. So what we're gonna do is, uh, the first thing to do is to find a location on the casing where you can safely drill a hole. I was careful to avoid this area with the gears. You can see there's not a lot of clearance there. Uh, but there was room here. I deliberately stayed out of the battery compartment because I wanted the ability to also run it off batteries when we were done. So I decided to uh, locate it here and I'm gonna bring it up a little closer here so you can see uh, we've fastened it with that little backing nut and we've got a couple little pieces of wire we've added. So we soldered a, a piece of black wire here to the uh, negative end of the uh, battery compartment, and then a small piece of wire to the positive end from the positive terminal of our connector. Uh, there's no insulation on that. That was just an accident. It all stripped off because it was such a, a short little piece of wire. We simply used some uh, light gauge speaker wire uh, when making those connections. And so those were soldered in there. And uh, with those connections made to this plug, uh, we can now plug in our wall brick and run this unit off of uh, AC. So we'll simply uh, plug it in. The other end is plugged into the wall. And now we turn on the switch. And you can see it runs just fine uh, on AC current. And you can pull that, uh, pull that out. And as I said before, this end is safe. You can handle this end, uh, this three volt end uh, without any any danger there. I wouldn't put it in your mouth, but it's pretty easy for kids to use. Obviously, you want to be uh, careful with the 120-volt uh, end at the wall. Now, the nice thing about this mod, as I said before, is we can still use the batteries. So, because we uh, were careful to locate that so it didn't interfere with the battery compartment, we can put the, uh, the original batteries back in there. And you can see it runs uh, just fine. And you can simply put that back together like that. And with the batteries in there, it runs just fine. Or we can uh, pop those batteries out and run it off AC. Now again, the total cost of the parts for this mod was uh, not even $4. We got the uh, wall brick, as I said, for less than $2. These little connectors came in a 10-pack and uh, ran about $0.10 cents a piece. And now we have a hot dose booster that also runs without batteries. Just by plugging it into the wall. So there you have it, AC Power Booster Mod. You can do this for any Hot Wheels Power Booster. Just check to make sure you've got the right voltage. Be safe and have fun. Still fast, still fun. Hot Wheels.